Okay, I think uh, uh, we can uh, start. So many thanks uh, to everybody to be present at this uh, third Dutch Taiwanese webinar, Optics uh, Photonics. Uh, I'm Eddie Schipper and I work for the Netherlands Enterprise uh, Agency. Uh, in the Netherlands, uh, the high-tech manufacturing is a focus area. Uh, in the high-tech sector, optics, photonics is a key enabling technology. A specific interest is in integrated photonics with the Photon Delta community. Manufacturing integrated photonics is of utmost importance to enable new exciting solutions to tackle the many societal challenges. For example, energy efficient telecom networks, safe autonomous driving, fast medical diagnostics. Taiwan has a big impressive high-tech industry with a lot of activities in the semicon field. Optics photonics is also in Taiwan of growing importance, especially integrated photonics, which has a close relation with semicon, shows a lot of potential. I think that there are many opportunities to work together to get in this way to even better solutions and bigger business opportunities. We started these uh, series of three to four webinars, Taiwan Photonics, uh, to get inspiration for future collaboration. Last week, we had a webinar on the possible, in, possible integrated photonics solutions on devices. And this last webinar before the summer break, we will go into the manufacturing of these devices. Integrated photonics is the field where we use photons instead of electrons inside the chip. Managing photons inside a chip is difficult. In research, in many years, exciting solutions were already found. Thanks to all the efforts last years, the technology has now been grown into a viable industrial technology. Two key aspects in the manufacturing chain are the pick manufacturing and the packaging of the chip, the integration with electronics fibers. The manufacturing of the pick and the packaging of the chip will be addressed in this webinar with six speakers in the next one and a half hours. We will have two speakers from Taiwan and four from the Netherlands. Uh, we will have two sessions. So there's one session so on uh, the integrated uh, uh, circuit manufacturing and the second one on the big uh, manufacturing. Uh, for the attendees, um, you have the opportunity to use the chat function, which you can find in the middle of the, of the screen as a button, uh, to ask questions. And we will try after each uh, session to come back to these uh, questions. And, and please uh, use the chat function. Uh, because it's um, much more interesting for all of us to, to see where, where you are looking uh, for. Uh, at the end of uh, both sessions, uh, I will uh, come back uh, to uh, general things which are still uh, not answered, and then we will close. Uh, so uh, I think let's uh, start now with the first uh, speakers of the first uh, subsection. Um, uh, first, uh, to uh, uh, Dr. Chin Chung Lin, uh, the R&D director of AOSL ITRI, and afterwards uh, Johan Fensa, CEO of Smart Photonics, and Anna Lenz, uh, CEO of Lionics. So first, I would like to give the, the time to Dr. Lin. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eddie, for your uh, kind introduction. Uh, my name is Chen Chong Lin. I'm from uh, Yitri. And uh, I would like to uh, chat with you about uh, uh, sustainable uh, ecosystems for, uh, uh, for PIC. Uh, since we only have about uh, 12 minutes today, so probably uh, just give you a very brief uh, overview on uh, what we uh, think about on this uh, PIC uh, industry and uh, ecosystem. So uh, uh, first, uh, briefly uh, talk about uh, who we are, and then uh, give you a, a perspective on uh, what we think about uh, on the, these uh, ecosystems. And also, uh, we will talk about uh, E3's efforts. 
So ITRI is a, a research institute in Taiwan. Uh, we have more than uh, 6,000 uh, professionals uh, uh, located in uh, Xinjiang and also uh, in Taipei, in uh, Tainan. We have uh, several different campuses uh, uh, across the island, uh, also in Taichung. So uh, uh, among uh, those uh, 6,100 uh, employees, um, over two thirds of them uh, with uh, advanced degree. And uh, we have a very strong uh, patent uh, portfolio. Uh, over 28,000 uh, patents has been uh, obtained. And also uh, we work on the um, industrial uh, services uh, in our uh, uh, institute. So um, we have uh, provided uh, over uh, 18,000 uh, cases of uh, uh, industry uh, services. Uh, some of our very uh, famous uh, high-tech company uh, is actually a uh, uh, spin-off from uh, eTree, uh, including uh, TSMC and uh, also the UMC. Uh, also, the, some companies in LED uh, industries like uh, Epistar and uh, also uh, Vanguard. So um, uh, there are uh, uh, over uh, 25,000 uh, alumni uh, in the industrial park in, uh, in Xinjiang that's uh, from uh, eTree. So uh, for us, uh, we uh, first look at the, the, what is the definition for an ecosystem. So uh, this is a copy from the Wikipedia, so you can find it from the internet. Uh, but uh, in short, the ecosystem, uh, you can uh, name uh, Earth is an ecosystem, computer industry is an ecosystem, and also the semiconductor industry is also uh, an ecosystem. However, uh, from the industry point of view and from the company point of view uh, is quite different. Uh, this is what we like to show you here. On the right hand side, you can see uh, from uh, the top to the bottom, it's a, a, a reverse uh, uh, pyramid. And uh, you will see the different uh, uh, definition. Uh, it's a market driven and also uh, you will look at the different uh, uh, sectors uh, like uh, the uh, foundries, like uh, the, the uh, equipment. But uh, at the bottom or the right, for example, for uh, TSMC, uh, the, the ecosystem, uh, what ecosystem means to them is quite simple. Uh, you have uh, your partner uh, companies and uh, also the, the customer that uh, these uh, partners serve. And the customer will feedback to uh, the uh, to, to uh, TSMC for their uh, improvement in, the, in terms of technology and also in terms of services. So uh, it's in terms of uh, the, the structure of the ecosystem, uh, it varies uh, from uh, different uh, system and from different industries. Uh, a very good example uh, to to uh, show you the importance of uh, the build up the ecosystem, uh, we can uh, use the Apple's App Store as an example. They started as an iTeam in uh, 2008, and then uh, they slowly grow into the uh, multi-billion uh, services uh, over the years, and uh, they can have uh, various uh, products. So at the beginning, uh, they, they probably uh, just do it out of a, a service to, the, to their customer. But then uh, they develop the, like uh, the conferences series, uh, like uh, the, the one that just held uh, WDC. And also they have a SDK, they have a website, and then, then it turns out it's a good return for the programmers and it, it will grow the, the ecosystem automatically. So this is just a very uh, brief like uh, a chart. You will see this uh, like uh, exponential growth of these uh, ecosystem build up. So that probably will tell you the, the importance of these uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, if we can build up the similar things in uh, a photonic integrated circuit uh, industry, then uh, they will be a very, very important to us. So, so far, actually we saw this uh, space uh, is uh, full of uh, different companies uh, down from the, the very beginning uh, or the, the upstream uh, the material uh, companies and, and to the uh, very uh, big circle one uh, uh, 
uh, like uh, the the system, the uh, LinkedIn, Microsoft, the Google, and uh, Amazon, all these big uh, giant uh, tech companies. So uh, you you can have a design foundries and then uh, opticals and uh, so many uh, different sectors that uh, will be integrated in this uh, ecosystems. And uh, um, uh, you provide this uh, wonderful chart for us to understand these uh, uh, industries. Uh, more recently, if you look at the uh, OFC uh, in this year, although this uh, pandemic uh, situations, you still see a very uh, vivid uh, activities uh, like in uh, uh, OFC 2020, Intel announced their uh, uh, co-packaged optics and the silicon uh, platform for the uh, ultra high speed uh, uh, programmable uh, switch. And also in uh, 2020 uh, OFC, you see a uh, uh, Renovos, um, a Canadian uh, company that uh, work with uh, IBM and they show a very uh, good uh, product. Uh, Manalox also announced their uh, high-speed uh, switch. So, so far you see uh, the, the, the uh, situation of the market actually uh, it grows because uh, the, I guess the, the internet, uh, they, they become a very important uh, connect connection uh, method uh, among these uh, uh, difficult times. So um, the projected uh, growth is uh, even uh, very high, it's 23.4% uh, CAGR over the period to the 2025. Uh, so uh, uh, from our perspective of view, uh, we, we will see a, a supply chain needs to be built up. Uh, you have to build up your own uh, products and then uh, uh, find the right channel, find the resources, the talent you need to secure, and then find the help, either from the government, from the VC, or from the other uh, partners. So for uh, E3, we, we think uh, the, the good thing is that we can uh, sort of, uh, we, are not, we are a nonprofit organization, research uh, institute, so uh, we can look at all these uh, uh, link and all these uh, supply chains, and we will try to help and foster the, the growth of the industry from the design, material, foundry, package, system, services. So uh, we need to find out what the market needs. We have to find out what is the pain point, and then uh, we try to solve it. For example, for the data center, you need to find out the speed, the bandwidth, uh, the power, and also the footprint. And for the car industry, you will see the, some uh, uh, autonomous driving. Uh, you need a very good uh, uh, devices. You need uh, sensors. You need a very good uh, uh, communications, high uh, temperature tolerance. Uh, so many things you need to uh, look at. So what would be the solution? Um, either the technology-oriented, application-oriented, and the cost-oriented. You can. Target it from the started from a different uh, way or different uh, thinking. So what can we do? Uh, we can always build a, a better devices, uh, but uh, uh, the very important thing is to find a new applications. Uh, always a good way to expand the technology and then find out the the potential customer. Uh, tap into the the unknown uh, market. Uh, some of the, the un, unexpected uh, usage, uh, for example, probably uh, human safety, that's uh, very important. Uh, Bio-friendly platform, that's very important. And uh, uh, if we can look at the, the uh, infrared application, nonlinear uh, optics applications, that might be a very uh, important uh, usage for this uh, photonic uh, integrated circuit. So, uh, important thing uh, I like to uh, address here is the cross disciplinary uh, collaborations uh, very important and uh, usually that's uh, the the key thing that we can uh, sort of uh, find uh, the killer applications uh, at the end uh, so from uh, each per perspective uh, we would like to stand at the uh, uh, integration uh, uh, role and uh, probably try to get the uh, feedback from the data center user, from the system, see, looking at uh, what they uh, would like to achieve, uh, what uh, uh, kind of spec uh, is currently uh, lack of from the, the current product. 
and then we can work with uh, the optical module, PCB, packaging, testing, and also the, the foundry system, uh, the foundry companies. So uh, our strategy is actually quite simple. We build up our core technologies and also uh, we will uh, try to link with uh, academia uh, and uh, foundries and also the industry. And uh, also the TSRI is uh, another uh, research institute uh, in Taiwan, uh, which is uh, uh, professional towards the, the, the silicon uh, fabrication and also the semiconductor uh, fabrication. So uh, we have uh, three uh, development uh, platform uh, developed here, including the manufacturing the, the photonic integrated uh, chip, and also for the packaging uh, and also for the high-speed uh, photonic electronic uh, measurement platform. Uh, because I think uh, the time is uh, quite limited, so I'll go through this really quickly. Uh, we uh, started several years ago. Uh, we uh, based on our uh, 248 nanometer lithography, uh, we develop uh, with uh, a TSRI um, for the passive and active devices in uh, silicon uh, photonics platform. And uh, so far, we have our uh, uh, passive waveguide and also uh, our uh, uh, modulator and the phot uh, photo detector uh, developed. So uh, here is our. Um, uh, Maxander modulator uh, with a uh, 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 50 gigabit uh, per second uh, eye diagram and also uh, 72 gigahertz uh, pen 4 signal uh, developed and also the the 40 gigahertz bandwidth of uh, germanium photo detector uh, was developed in our uh, lab. Uh, in terms of uh, photonic packaging, uh, we uh, uh, recognize the importance of uh, heterogeneous integration. Uh, we try to do the uh, electronic and the photonic uh, integration uh, on the same uh, uh, PCB board and also uh, try to uh, realize the design in terms of the uh, photonics input and the electronic input. Um, we also work on the uh, laser uh, incorporation uh, into the, the silicon chip and uh, the flexible uh, waveguide uh, uh, together with the, the, the empty uh, ferro connectors. And finally, we have a very uh, powerful uh, uh, high-speed uh, photonic measurement, uh, which can do the, the 8-inch or 12-inch or even broken pieces. Uh, so the full wafer to the broken pieces uh, 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 high-speed testing uh, and uh, fully automatic. So here's the platform that we've been built, the uh, PIC uh, manufacturing, uh, the package, and also the man uh, measurement. So uh, the conclusion is uh, actually, we think uh, the killer application is the key. Uh, we need to find out the killer application for the this uh, PIC industries and uh, uh, Itri uh, is always uh, like to work with uh, uh, global companies and also the local companies uh, to develop this uh, PIC industry in the future. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. We'll come back later with the questions. Uh, in due of time, uh, we go now to, to the second speaker, Johan Feinsta, CEO of Smart Photonics. All right, uh, let me start my video as well just so that you can see me. Um, yeah, welcome everyone. And uh, I'm very happy to uh, to be here and, and be able to connect across the world like this. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully we'll all be flying and, and, and traveling again, but I think this is a perfect alternative to get to know each other. Um, so what I'll do is present a little bit about smart photonics uh, to uh, make you understand what we do as a company. And as you can see, you can contact me later as well if you have some more questions or after the session. Uh, Smart Photonics is a, is a scale-up company based in the Netherlands that is started in 2012. Uh, and we basically combine two streams of work that was done before 2012. 
uh, at the University in Eindhoven here in the Netherlands. Uh, there was a lot of work on integrated photonics, bringing all these components together into a single chip and still make them perform optimally. Uh, a lot of that work we work and uh, work with today still and based on that. Uh, and a second stream of work was in, at Philips, where a lot of uh, optical components were fabricated. So a lot of that fabrication knowledge and epitaxial growth, as well as lith lithography, was brought into Smart Photonics in 2012. Uh, since then, uh, we've grown to uh, about uh, the size we have now, 70 people. Um, we actually attracted funding uh as of today in fact uh, was announced this morning uh to make a next growth step in uh, in the company to increase our capacities um what are we doing we are actually an indium phosphide foundry so we are focusing on manufacturing uh photonic chips mostly based on indium phosphide uh, that's our specialty. Uh, so we are not actually a product company. We do not have any products ourselves. The chip is our product. Uh, we provide the chip uh, based on designs from the outside uh, from customers. Uh, we do have a generic process. Uh, so we have a PDK, a process design kit, which I'll talk about uh, a little bit later. Uh, that customers can use in order to design their chips. And then we are making these chips for them, uh, allowing them to make uh, chips, of course, without having to have manufacturing facilities. We have a wide range of customers, uh, small, large companies in the world, um, but and also different places in the in the value chain. So we actually uh, have OEMs that are doing packaging and module making, but sometimes we also work directly with end users uh, who are then basically supplementing the uh, uh, the phases in between, so the modularization and the system. Um, Our facilities, we actually have two different facilities. Uh, we originate from the from the, uh, the university at, uh, in Eindhoven, so we are still operating there, uh, focusing on R&D facilities uh, in, the, in the shared uh, uh, facility on the bottom, the Nanolab clean room at the university. We have also a facility at the high-tech campus in Eindhoven. Uh, and with the funding that we just uh, attracted, we will be expanding on that facility and we will be focusing our production at the high tech campus, whereas we do more and more the R&D work at the university. Uh, integrated photonics, maybe not needed to really do the advertising here, but I think it's still good. I mean, uh, you know, we use the ICs, of course, on the basis of light, as Eddie introduced earlier on. And we believe also that there is a huge market out there. There's many different applications. Uh, I agree with Dr. Lin, you know, uh, finding the killer application for this technology is one of the things we have to do in the coming years. Uh, but there are many things out there which can, can make use of it, uh, going from, of course, data communication, where photonics and optical communication is already in use. Uh, but we believe we can bring benefits by integrating more functions onto a chip. Medical systems, you can make them smaller and smaller with the integrated photonics. Uh, IoT, of course, lots of data being communicated there as well. And, uh, I think uh, another really interesting uh, application is uh, is LiDAR for automotive uh, systems. I'll talk a little bit about a few applications, uh, or maybe actually, in the, yeah, in the next slide. Here are some cases that are real, right? I mean, of course, there's huge market out there. I just wanted to give you a few examples that we work on together with our customers. Um, from left to right. Uh, so we are also indeed in the data communication space uh, where we have brought uh, the, the large box on the left upper corner uh, with a lot of components, a lot of different packaging, and a lot of uh, complicated stuff that is also less robust, all into a single chip. Um, 
and that allows, of course, for a lot of advantages uh, in, uh, in in the future, and is also a route to very very high bandwidth uh, bandwidths later on. Another example we're working on with a company uh, in the Netherlands, which is going to be presenting later on also in these sessions, uh, on an aerospace uh, uh, application, a very, very high sensitive uh, system, where uh, which is much, much more sensitive than the current uh, existing systems. It's much smaller, has lower power consumption and lower cost. And of course, you know, aerospace, I mean, having full safety with these planes, uh, as we all know, uh, we really would like to see that. So having a system like that in our plane, I think is going to benefit us all. But, uh, you know, I, I, I leave it to uh, Anna to, uh, to introduce the system in more detail. Uh, happy to be part of that as well. Um, we don't only make pure, fully, fully integrated indium phosphide uh, systems. We also make some simpler systems sometimes uh, with a couple of components uh, and then integrate to silicon photonics. Because in the end, uh, you need active components also in silicon photonics. Uh, that could be lasers, but in some cases we have customers that ask us to integrate for instance, a number of lasers on a single chip because it makes their life easier from the packaging point of view, right? If you have four or 15 lasers on a single chip, that makes life much easier from the integration point of view. And then in addition, what we can do is also add the modulator uh, into that single chip and get more and more functionality into the indium phosphide uh, combined still with silicon photonics uh, which is another way uh, that we can benefit from our integration process. Um, process design kit, as I said, we have a generic process the same way a silicon foundry works. So uh, we have building blocks that people can use, combine into a, into a chip. Uh, in the end, the design is our customer's design. Um, they are the ones that uh, bring it to market. We are the ones that actually have the generic uh, knowledge on the processing of these uh, of these chips, uh, and together we work on uh, all these beautiful applications. Uh, the PDK is available through a, a number of the uh, high-profile parties, Synopsys, the Miracle, uh, and also the smaller ones, uh, so Bright Photonics, uh, BPI. Uh, a number of parties. So if customers come to us, we can actually facilitate uh, the connection to the PDK and the customers. Um, finishing slide, uh, because I think this is really, I mean, this kind of session is really to get to know each other. I introduced Smart Photonics a little bit. Um, happy to talk more and to see whether, you know, whether we can have collaborations. I've been working with Taiwanese companies in the past a lot, uh, also with E3, so uh, you know I really enjoy that. So uh, I think there's plenty of opportunities. I think there's plenty of new applications. So we're always looking for good customers, of course, that are willing to uh, develop the technology further to custom to 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 applications, final applications with us. But I think there's also lots of opportunities on you know system level integration, the impact of integration, how. Can we work together with the indium phosphide in the silicon photonics world? How can we actually make that interface as smooth as possible? Um, and also, you know, the impact of, of, of combining the two. Uh, um, you know, that those are some of the opportunities. I'm sure there are many other opportunities as well to, uh, to work together. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you for your attention. OK, many thanks. Uh, to to Johan. Um, yeah, again, we will first go to uh, the the third speaker, then uh, back to the the questions. So we first go now to uh, now to Anne Leinse of uh, Lionix. Thank you very much, Eddie, for the introduction. Um, thank you all for joining this uh, this webinar. Um, what I want to do in the next eight minutes is um, not explain you the full technology in detail. Uh, we won't be able to do that in eight minutes. Um, just I would like to introduce uh, Lionix briefly, um, show what hybrid technologies can do, and hopefully trigger the thought in your head of putting multiple chips in the package. So 
I'm from Linux International. My name is Arne Leinsen. Uh, what I will talk about today is the Triplex platform. It's a silicon nitride based platform which originates already back from 2001. And over the last two decades, we've further standardized and matured the platform to a volume manufacturable uh, technology. So two slides on our company. Well, Lionix is a vertically integrated foundry. And why is that important? Um, because the nice examples which Johan showed in a previous presentation, um, it's not about chips. It's about a module that does something for a customer. Either it's fiber connected or it's um, RF connection or any connection. Um, the chip is just a component in that package. And what we need to offer to customers in collaboration projects or in, in development routes is making these, developing these modules and making them in volume. And integrated photonics is one of the key enablers to do this. And what we do is we, uh, we don't make our own products. We make customized solutions for in particularly OEM customers. And we do that from low volume to high volume. We take the customer by the hand from, <coughs> sorry, from first single module to high volume production. As said, vertically integrated and at the forefront of technology development. You see some pictures here of our lab, um, our design libraries, um, some assembled modules. At the bottom of the presentation, there's my email address. This will be shared also later. Um, so feel free also to reach out if you have any questions afterwards about us or the ecosystem in the Netherlands. We can easily guide you in the right direction. Because it's very important that it's not just one platform. It's not just us. It's the ecosystem that we need. It's the collaboration. We always call that co-development. Um, because what I try to show in this slide is that there are multiple silicon or photonic integrated circuit platforms. In this case, the three we compare is indium phosphide, which Johan uh, just talked about, uh, silicon nitride and silicon and insulator. Um, each having their own unique operation wavelength, um, indium phosphide and silicon on insulator, and particularly in the infrared. Silicon nitride is also transparent down to the visible, which enables new applications which earlier were not possible with um, integrated photonics. If we then look at the components that think that these chips can make, um, each platform has its pros and cons. Each platform has its unique selling points. And um, what you see here also is a number of yellow uh, marked areas. And that's actually where you get a very good performance by combining different platforms. And I'll show you in the end one example for the microwave photonics of the 5, for the 5G mark. So the triplex platform, and what you see, we always show this, uh, this kind of picture to some typical cross sections. Um, it's a low pressure chemical vapor deposition based silicon nitride platform, um, where the silicon nitride and silicon oxide are the basic materials. These are end products of a chemical reaction. So they're always, you always get SI3 and 4, and you always get SiO2. And just playing with the layer thickness, the amount of layers or the geometry, you get different properties. Where the top waveguide in this one has a very low biofringence, <coughs> the center one has a very high biofringence. And the center one is most often used nowadays for microwave photonics, for a lot of sensing applications. Um, and I'll show you in the next slide why that is. Because the big benefit of um, the process we have or what we can make is that we can also adapt the mode profile over the chip. So we can match it to fiber on one side and a high confinement active platform, for instance, on the other side and add functionality to our platform also. So you put the functionality where it fits best. And the big benefit, of course, of nitride is that it's transparent also in the visible light. And you see an example of an arid waveguide grating in visible light at the right, uh, right corner. And the reason why that central geometry is so beneficial, you see the cross section again here with a high confinement mode, is that over the waveguide and this cross section in center is the, the, along the propagation direction, uh, we can adiabatically thin down that nitride, the top nitrides, to uh, result in a low confinement waveguide in the edge to uh, very efficiently couple to fibers or to lenses or to low NA um, outcoupling. Uh, think of optical phase arrays, think of um, fiber array connections. And on the high confinement side, we could easily connect it to all different sorts of indium phosphide um, and the different platforms.
So the big benefit is is that these platforms, the manufacturing of these become um, more move away from the real technology steps or the etching steps to the design steps. And that's what the previous presenter also showed already. You have these PDKs, you have these design kits. And as a user, you can design in different platforms. And that enables new things if you do it in two platforms at once. Um, this example shows, for instance, if we silicon nitride is very good at low propagation loss. Um, it's transparent in a large wavelength range. We have um, reproducible actuators, uh, but we can't generate light. You can't have fast modulators. So combining this with indium phosphide, and then the top or the lower right, you see a picture of that where you see a gain section in indium phosphide combined with a single silicon nitride external cavity. Uh, we built a, a very accurate, very um, high quality a tunable uh, laser for microwave photonics, for LiDAR, for sensing. Um, line widths in the order of a kilohertz, powers in the order of hundreds of milliwatts, um, and all in a small footprint of a photonic integrated circuit in a, in a very robust package. And these things are nowadays also uh, offered in multi project wafer runs. So, there you as a customer can design this, this area yourself, and that laser is already included in the standard die template. And nowadays, what you, the manufacturing of chips, as said, is not anymore about ferrying all sorts of processing steps and do that dedicated for you. It's more on system level design with PDKs, built functionality that are made in the standard foundry process. This is the other example I wanted to show. These are typical modules that you see in um, uh, optical beam forming networks, like the new 5G networks, um, satellite uh, communication systems on top of airplanes. And on the lower on the, on the left picture, you see a typical uh, picture of such an antenna, where each antenna has either a phase shift or a delay line. And uh, by delaying the signals to the phased array antenna, I can give such an antenna a steering angle. Um, the tricky part, if you want to do that in electronics, is the fact that you will have all sorts of beam squint and you will have all sorts of bandwidth limitations. By doing that in the photonic domain, these limitations are now no longer there. And you can just integrate a module, as you see on the right, which is actually an RF in, um, uh, RF out module, um, fully processing the signal in the photonic domain. and um, coupling out the signal again after delaying uh, these antenna elements or these signals from the antenna elements. So as a user, you don't even see that it's photonics. You just see a true time delay of the uh, RF signals. And this is only enabled by integrating. And you see in the right, you see in, uh, there's an indium phosphide modulator chip in there. There's an indium phosphide laser chip in there. Uh, and there's a large silicon nitride chip to do the uh, delays of the system. So in summary, on the, on the manufacturing of these kind of modules and not chips, um, the big benefits of silicon nitride is that it's, it's low loss. It's, uh, the, the LPCVD process makes it volume manufacturable in a reproducible way. Um, but very importantly, it can be hybridly combined with other platforms. And in this case, I've showed indium phosphide, um, but also active components in visible light, nowadays opening up applications in um, AR, VR, by combining light sources directly to the chip and doing signal processing on chip. So the manufacturing is not about the pure waveguide. Um, it's about how to put everything in a module with the different platforms. If there are any questions, I'm, uh, I'm available. Um, so I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you very much. OK, thank you very much, uh, Arne. Um, yeah, I will go to uh, a few questions now. Um, uh, first, I, I want to go to uh, Dr. Ling. Uh, there was already a question in the chat, and that had everything to do with the, the importance of the, uh, the uh, ecosystem, of the, uh, the building up the complex uh, 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 supply chain. Uh, there was, of course, the question which you could expect that if you have such a big uh, supply chain, how uh, the Dutch and uh, Taiwanese could work together in this uh, uh, supply chain. Uh, I see that you already answered in the chat, uh, so you said something about uh, the, to use um, uh, to understand each other. Very important uh, uh, to build up a uh, ecosystem. You should understand each other. 
And I think uh, part of the answer was about uh, developing generic technologies. Um, what uh, I think still is a question, a specific question is, uh, where do you see uh, where uh, specifically the Taiwanese and Dutch goods complement each other in this uh, supply chain? Yeah, uh, so I, I see a very strong uh, um, industry or uh, the technology uh, development uh, from the Netherlands side, uh, for example, uh, uh, from uh, the uh, talks uh, or the slides you, you just see uh, in uh, smart photonics and uh, in uh, uh, Leonix. Um, uh, so um, I'm really uh, impressed uh, with those uh, uh, developments. So for example, in uh, the 3.5 uh, uh, fabrication side, I think uh, um, uh, Netherlands has a very uh, strong uh, start and uh, um i i think uh, that that would be a, a very good thing for the the initial steps of uh, collaboration because you you do need uh, the chips to to start with and then you have to think about uh, what kind of application you can use for these uh, uh photonic chips and that will be uh, the the duties or the responsibles from uh, both sides because uh, we probably will think about uh, a different like a European market or the Asian market. So we probably have different thoughts, but that's uh, also the beauty of collaborations that we can uh, work together to develop a, a even better uh, products. Uh, so that's what I think that uh, the part that we can uh, collaborate in the, in the future. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, I myself have made a mistake to switch off my camera. Uh, I just got the uh, the message that uh, because we are discussing, in fact, discussing that uh, to to the speakers to uh, to switch on, on the camera again uh, for a few moments. Um, the uh, second question I have uh, is to to Johan. And uh, and, of, and of course, this was now already discussed. I mean, you have the the, uh, the indium phosphide uh, technology. Uh, which uh, you're very strong in, and you have the silicon uh, photonics in Taiwan, which is very strong in Taiwan. Um, you already also mentioned that these can uh, can uh, come together. Um, what do you think are the are the, are the first steps to uh, to to bring these worlds together? Um. Well, I mean, it's, I think it's getting to know sort of the strengths from the, the, the two different platforms. Uh, you know, what are the capabilities? What are, I think, also interesting applications to work together on? I mean, what kind of platform, product platforms we would be working on? Uh, and to, to really sort of jointly find the best way to, uh, to make use of benefits of both, right? I mean, I think uh, the... Uh, the indium phosphate and the silicon photonics both have their own merits, their own advantages, uh, and I'm, I'm you know, very sure that we can bring those together in, into something that is uh, that is bringing benefit to the end customer. So getting to know the benefits, getting to know, to bring them together, and understand to design a platform, as I think that that will be the first steps. Okay, um, many thanks for the answer. Um, Arne, then that will be the last question in this first uh, round. Um, you are working with the silicon nitrides, which uh, is uh, uh, visible, uh, which is transparent in the in the visible uh, regime. Um, so it is uh, interesting for sensing applications. Uh, do you see some uh, specific uh, area in the sensing uh, which could create a killer application? Um, yes. To be honest, uh, of course, the, the current global hype of, uh, of Corona is, is, is helping us in that, accelerating that. Uh, we see a big drive now in uh, biophotonics, in creating sensors for healthcare applications. This was originally developed, started for oncology, for cancer diagnostics. We see the big accelerator now for uh, Corona testing. So on the one hand, and that's the benefit of visible light, or at least 850, is that you can use very cheap light sources and therefore make very simple disposable uh, chips, but also fluorescence detection is much easier at visible light. Um, the other killer applications, of course, um, which are uh, 
popping up now. Um, is, um, uh, the, the, the LiDAR is very interesting for um, the narrow line with lasers, um, but that's that's still focusing a lot on uh, on 1550, but it's also moving down to lower wavelengths. Uh, and in the visible light, of course, AR, VR is coming up. Those are the, typically the visible light or the lower wavelength applications where everybody is looking in combining red, green, blue with other colors to directly project uh, laser light in the human eye. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, I think we go now to uh, the, the second part. Uh, uh, that will be on the packaging. Uh, again, uh, three, we have three speakers. Uh, first, we will go to uh, Jeroen Duis, uh, CCO at uh, FIX. So, uh, Jeroen, uh, the, the floor is to you. Oh, thank you very much for the uh, the introduction and uh, the kind words. Uh, as Eddie just mentioned, I'm the Chief Commercial Officer within FIX. Uh, my contact details are over there. Um, let me just go over. So in this presentation, I will give a, a short introduction and rationale uh, on photonic integrated circuits, uh, then about photonics assembly versus electronics assembly, uh, what differences are and what opportunities are uh, uh, when combining them together, uh, then an introduction on FIX and how we are doing the prototyping as well as the roadmap to, to volume assembly and packaging. So one thing I learned over the 20 years that I've been active in the photonics field is that there's always a need for complexer modules, uh, regardless of where, where people are starting. Each next generation is going to be more complex than the previous generation. Um, and what people can, of course, do is they with fiber optics, where it all started, you can do routing, you can make more, more efficient schemes, uh, you can get higher density with interconnects ranging from like single fiber to multi-fiber interfaces. And if you're looking to the recent uh, datacom solutions, you can get like 72 fibers in a single interconnect. But of course, all these fibers need to be lighted up. What we can also see is like in this need for complex modules, all the manual labor uh, that was going into it in the early days, that's something that needs to be overcome. So you need to have a way to get it a, in an automated configuration uh, and assemble it in very high volumes. So that's where we are seeing really the transition of photonics being similar as for electronics, uh, but then with uh, like three decades of delay behind it. So in the electronics, you have like a, a breadboard uh, that made its way through a PCB. Uh, and from the PCB, you get to a integrated chip solution. If you're looking in the photonics area, people are starting typically on a uh, optical breadboard as well, like an optical table. Uh, they are making modules out of that uh, with customized uh, uh, metal hardware. Uh, and in the end, what we are seeing now is that people are ending with photonic integrated circuits on a board and nicely connected with fiber interfaces and electrical interfaces, giving all the functionality that the chip is requiring. But if you're looking to the photonic integrated circuits, this slide is uh, courtesy of uh, the PIXAP consortium where FIX is a member of. So also there we are collaborating with a number of companies on uh, the, the packaging side to get the full ecosystem available for packaging. Uh, we are working, if you're looking to the, the electronics field, you have the electrical interfacing and the thermal and mechanical interfacing. Those are quite identical. If you're looking to the optical part, uh, that's where we are seeing you need like uh, interposers, you need to have connections to fibers, and the connections to these fibers are typically like 10 to even 100 times more accurate when it comes to positioning uh, than it is required in the electrical area. And that's where a huge gap is actually presented uh, over the years, uh, where photonics is significantly different than the, uh, the electronics industry. Uh, also, FIX is performing hybrid integration, so we are recognizing that not one chip is having all the functionalities uh, in, in the most perfect configuration or combination that you would like to have. So by combining different material systems, you're getting the optimal functionality for your end product, regardless whether it's a, a sensor or a complex light source or a, a data communication link. 
Um, where are we coming from? Uh, so we are becoming the world leader in photonics packaging and assembly for photonic integrated circuits by supplying these pig based components and modules in scalable production volumes. So we are initiated by Leonix International in 2017 and started our operations in 2018. And this is mainly to really perform the massive scale up that is required in the pig industry for the uh, different markets that are uh, really uh, growing very fast. Um, and we are specialized in the hybrid pick assembly of like the fiber with fiber array interfaces as well as the different chip materials which make us unique in the market. If you're looking to the supply chain, then from a packaging assembly and test perspective, we would be rather close to the customers. Uh, but since we originate from one of the, uh, the foundries uh, that is now vertically integrated, we also have a lot of knowledge in like the silicon chips, the indium phosphide chips, as well as the triplex uh, configurations, and combining that with electronics and fibers. So we are working together with our customers already from an early phase, since starting in the chip design and getting in some like mechanical features or optical features that can be recognized will help you actually in making your first prototypes and have like a, a, a very smooth transition from these first prototypes to high volume production in a later stage. Looking to the competencies, uh, here you see like a, a stack of multi, multiple chips uh, with the, the fiber interface on the bottom and a nitride chip in the middle and indium phosphide pick on the top. Uh, what we need to do actually to build such configuration is we need to do the die preparation, meaning the dicing and polishing of the, uh, the facets that are required to make an optical interface. Uh, we do the die alignment and bonding, uh, so we are typically getting a 250 nanometer post bonding accuracy and getting the chips uh, be lined up with each other. Uh, we need to do the electrical interfacing by means of uh, flip chipping or wire bonding, uh, depending on the configuration and, and solution customer is looking for. Uh, thermally, the chips need to be stabilized. So we put these components on a turbo electric cooler uh, with a thermistor on top so that you can make a control loop and control the temperature of your device very accurately. Uh, also to scale up the fiber array manufacturing, uh, we recognize that that's like a, a, a huge gap, especially for polarization maintaining fibers. Uh, so we built our own equipment uh, to get PM fiber arrays to a much higher production volume. Further, we are specialized in high power interfacing. So for the visible wavelength range, the mode field is much smaller than for the infrared, and therefore the power densities per square micron are uh, orders of magnitude higher. And for that, we sometimes also need free space packaging to make a sensing window to the outer world. Arno was already showing this slide of the three major PIC platforms and the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, but what we need to do in addition uh, for the uh, all the wavelengths, so all the colors of the light, is we need to be able to integrate also other material systems that are not PIC platforms, but mainly like light sources based on uh, gallium arsenide or gallium nitride for the visible wavelength range, or lithium niobate, uh, mainly for very high speed modulators, uh, PLCs or uh, quantum cascade lasers for the far infrared. So in order to be able to have all the wavelength ranges integrated, we need to be able to support these different uh, platforms. This is our uh, fiber assembly machine. Uh, so it's a machine that was developed together with Fraunhofer IPT in Germany and uh, with uh, Ixemtec, a machine builder, equipment builder. Uh, and actually this machine helps us to like pick up a fiber, recognize the PM uh, stress rods, uh, uh, and then put it in the V groove and step and repeat this process such that we can build like a 20 channel, 30 channel, 64 channel fiber array that is required to get out all the optical interfaces of such photonic integrated circuits. Uh, also, we are configuring it with different fibers, so we can do like polarization maintaining fibers, for example, in the blue light and in another area in the fiber array, uh, we are implementing that for red or even infrared light. 
so you're not limited to one fiber type per uh, per chip interface. In order to scale this up further, we are offering this as well through our website as like a, a standard production service. So you can just configure your own fiber array uh, and request a quote. So in orange here, it's showing some of the high runners that we're trying to get on stock as like uh, standard parts and the other ones are more uh, uh, custom built uh, directly for you. Um, and in order to match also with the different uh, chip platforms, since all PIC platforms have different mode fields, uh, we also offer the addition of spot size converters directly to the fiber array. So customers don't need to tell us then what they're doing. They can go ahead and test their own solution, uh, which has integrated spot size converter on a fiber array. In order to scale up the prototyping, uh, we have developed the characterization package standards. So it's more like a Lego style of components that we can bond together and we can put a chip in the middle um, and, uh, with all the functionality. And as you can see, we have it up to like 32 fibers in and out uh, on, on both ends, as well as up to 300 electrical contacts. So we recognize that actually from an early stage, it's important that you're not spending your expensive R&D money in, in all kind of customization, but you want to have something that you can take off the shelf, save on the R&D, and then spend that money in really getting a customized module later on. So here you see another slide. We're a little bit more zoomed in and like the different components being laid down. We have a, a high level of experience in multi-chip packaging. So in this case, you're seeing an example from, uh, from Lionix, where we are having an automated tool now that can assemble three indium phosphide chips uh, to the edges of the silicon nitride chip, which is here in the middle, as well as a PM5 array attached, which is going to the side. So for us, it's not so much about the functionality of the module, but really in the processing steps to assemble this all together and make it a functional module and making sure that also the, the heat is being taken out of the module and that optically you have the best performance that you can get. So then I have three examples uh, for components that we are manufacturing and, and that we're markers that we're active in. So it's the tunable laser application, as Arne mentioned. So this is like a indium phosphide gain section with an, a nitride chip uh, uh, and then connected to the fiber array. Here we are working on a biosensor application. So we are flip chipping pixels and photodiodes on top of grating, so it's a different kind of coupling scheme. So instead of coupling it from the edge, we are here coupling it from the top. Uh, and in a similar configuration, we can also do silicon photonics grating couplings, where we're doing a polished facet and do an orthogonal coupling into the uh, silicon photonics chip. And then in the last slide, I have a LiDAR application uh, where we are placing uh, VIXELs. So on one side, we see multiple routes for people taking the, the LiDAR space. So it's the FWCM configurations where everything is integrated on a chip. Or also, if you're looking for solid state, it's like multiple arrays of VIXELs where each VIXEL will shine in a slightly different direction. Uh, and for this, we need very accurate alignment. And those are kind of processing steps that we also require for integrated photonics uh, chips, and that's the reason why it fits very well with the businesses that we're doing. So I think for us, the possibilities uh, for collaboration with you are endless, uh, but we need to think of packaging in an early stage to get a solid commercialization route from the prototyping to the very high volume customized solutions like the laser box, which is showing here in the bottom. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, th thank you very much, uh, uh, we, Again, we come back to uh, the questions at the end of the session. Uh, also, to all the participants, as I said in the beginning, uh, you can use the Q&A uh, funct function to ask uh, questions. So please, if you have questions, uh, um, you give us a question so we can uh, present it and discuss about it. Um, we will go now to the second uh, speaker, Anna Nikil. Vice President of uh, Business uh, uh, Development at Technobis. So, Anna. Is 
Is Anna there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Eddie. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Uh, so thank you again for introduction. I'm delighted to be here with you. So maybe first I will tell you a few words about the Technobis. Uh, Technobis was established in the 1996 and become a global uh, leader in the development and manufacture of the optical sensing. And uh, our heritage is in the fiber break gratings for aerospace, when we realized that uh, putting 5,000 sensors into single fiber had uh, also an other application. And we are known from the temperature and the strain interrogators. Uh, however, today I would like to talk about our uh, uh, peak packaging foundry. Uh, now we are opening uh, two packaging lines uh, to offer contract manufacturing uh, of uh, system to our partners. And uh, yeah, here are some uh, ideas we are working uh, on. So, um, yeah, uh, so uh, as I told you, uh, our heritage is in uh, FBG sensing and uh, we were early adopters of the integrated photonics as an uh, optical uh, processor. So this is our special things. Uh, we use the optical chip, uh, which help us do sensing. And uh, this approach uh, uh, allow us to reduce the dimension of our device, power consumption, and at the same time, increase the measurement resolution and accuracy. Photonic integrated circles is uh, considered to be the most promising uh, technology uh, for, uh, uh, for in interrogation devices for fiber optic sensing. And in the last uh, uh, 12 years, uh, based more on our own needs to, to packaging chips, uh, because when we start uh, pr uh, producing our gators, uh, our interrogators based on the photonic integrated circles, nobody could help us with the packaging. So over the last 12 years, uh, we uh, develop uh, uh, peak uh, packaging uh, foundry. And uh, now uh, uh, we offer peak uh, packaging expertise to our clients because we know that this part of the process is uh, often the major cost factor and the requalification can be a serious roadblock uh, yeah, uh, to commercial success. And uh, we build the products with nearly 300 uh, peak uh, uh, designs, including models that need to withstand very harsh environment in the aerospace and uh, operate with uh, extreme uh, um, accuracy in the medical devices. Uh, so uh, here on the slide, you can uh, see our own um, system, our own gators, uh, which also uh, Johan showed, um, uh, I think, in the presentation from SMART, which are really on the size, uh, yeah, we could say that the world's uh, smallest interrogator, which are on the size of, the, of, the, of your town. Okay, next slide. Oh, no, uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, so uh, we've been uh, designing and building uh, high-end integrated circle models for our clients, and uh, uh, we built and package uh, um, yeah, prototypes. And once uh, once are proven, we can easily scale up in-house uh, packaging line to manufacture tens of thousands of pieces uh, uh, for customers per year. And our core expertise is uh, the design and manufacture of analog, RF sensing, uh, telecom, and uh, datacom devices. Uh, we produce a wide range of the uh, hermetic sealed systems models for the aerospace, medical, automotive, uh, uh, industrial, as well as the uh, oil and gas. Um, and uh, we can easily adopt uh, our lines to match uh, your IOS uh, certification uh, requirements. And um, uh, for the series and volume production, 20% uh, tw uh, of uh, our uh, capacity uh, is uh, uh, for our own products, for our sensing, and 80% 80 uh, 80 of our capacity is for the third parties, like a uh, university, uh, um, uh, SMEs, uh, startups, but also the bigger company, which, one, uh, which uh, uh, would like to, in the one house, uh, first uh, do the prototyping, and easily uh, scale up for the production up to 250,000. Well, next one. Not so easy. Okay. Uh, so um, 
as I said, uh, we uh, we open uh, two 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 separate lines. Uh, first one is uh, more focused on the prototyping, uh, generic uh, peak testing, and smart service uh, production, and uh, another line is uh, uh, more focused on the series and uh, volume production uh, up to 250,000 uh, uh, units per year. And of course, if the company wants to scale up, uh, we have to ask uh, our our friends uh, from the Taiwan, for example, for for helping and uh, taking this capa uh, capability and capacity. So I think uh, that uh, here is a very nice uh, uh, point for the collaboration. Yes, and um, uh, as I say, uh, Technobi is uh, similar, like uh, fixed is offering all kinds of the services from uh, quality control and uh, passive and active inspection and dye testing to stress-free bonding and uh, extreme conditions uh, to build a high performance system uh, yeah which are can stable uh, operate over a wide temperature range typically minus 45 uh, uh, to plus 85 uh, 85 celsius here, here you can see, uh, for example, how uh, how looks our inspection of the indium phosphide uh, 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 chips. Uh, uh, now, uh, in the end of the year, this is in progress. We got it also uh, automatic dye and uh, wire bonding. Uh, so, uh, yeah, our foundry is uh, growing. Uh, yeah, every every day, almost every month, I would say. Mm, here I would like to also show uh, for you more uh, um, more our services and uh, more the products which we are able uh, uh, to make uh, uh, for the customers. But uh, I think that the best way uh, to to operate is the call for action. If you need a more question and more details, we are offering all uh, our capability and capacity uh, papers where you can learn what we are able to do. Uh, but uh, I just want to uh, see, uh, show you some uh, example of the butterfly package. This is one of the standard packaging uh, which we can use. Uh, yeah, very easy uh, out of the shelf. Uh, standard in-house packaging, system in the package, uh, uh, generic test packaging, and uh, uh, of course customers uh, package which uh, uh, which are designed and uh, uh, with a, uh, with a input from from our customers. Yes, and um, I always like to to show some kind of the uh, interesting examples. This is a distributed uh, temperature sensing uh, which we produce uh, for uh, for Technobis. This is our uh, internal products. Uh, this is something what we produce for for Airbus, and this is very uh, unique uh, 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 sensing device which uh, which we are able to put uh, 200. Uh, more than 200 and uh, 2,500 thousand 200, 500 uh, unique uh, fiber sensor on the one single fiber uh, with a very large uh, dynamic range and uh, this is uh, aerospace uh, uh, compliant OEM model and uh, here you could see our package uh, yeah which uh, which uh, can uh, a stand very harsh environment, as I said before, and uh, here you say the integration of the electronics up to say, uh, six uh, pixel ports, and um, yeah, uh, and I have another example which is also very, yeah, very spectacular, which is uh, landing gear, uh, uh, landing gear load sensing, and uh, this is uh, also something what we did, uh, what we did for the uh, for the um, aerospace. Uh, this supports the the, uh, the flight management and uh, flight control. This is also an um, OEM uh, uh, multi-channel uh, FBG interrogator, but uh, as you see, very small one. And this uh, blue things, which uh, I think that you can see, and I'm not able to see on my presentation, uh, it's a uh, um, dual uh, peak uh, uh, accommodation. This is also uh, Something very special what Technobis is able to do is uh, uh, thermal management. We spent a lot of time and a lot of uh, effort uh, to work for the thermal management on the, uh, our uh, peak packaging. 
Yeah, and uh, I think that uh, that's all what I prepare for you. And uh, I just want to encourage you if you uh, have some uh, ideas for the very fast prototyping or uh, you would like to use our ex experience, uh, yeah, please uh, stay in touch. I'm always happy to, to follow up uh, your request and uh, questions. Thank you. And a very, very uh, nice presentation. So uh, again, we'll come back uh, to you uh, at the end with uh, questions. Um, uh, we first go now to Herbert uh, Chen, Vice President of Product Management of GrowWave Corporation. So uh, um, the floor is for you. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, my name is Herbert Chen. Uh, I will present a uh, photonics chip package in GrowWave. Uh, here, uh, overview and application. Yeah, Broadway was founded in 1998. Uh, Broadway was IPO uh, in Taiwan uh, stock market in uh, 2012. So at this moment, uh, we are focusing on passive optical module and uh, the uh, PIC assembly. So the application area is 5G. Uh, communication area and the remote by for uh, cable uh, communication also internet optical sensing and ai chip with optical fiber so that's a, a broadway uh, situation so at this moment uh, our revenue size uh, for yearly uh, around uh, 100 million us dollars so uh, that's a, a overview of broadway and uh, our application so next one, uh, let, let me uh, share uh, from Broadway a uh, viewpoint for PIC uh, packaging. So the device performance, the PIC device performance uh, was always improvement uh, scaling by not uh, getting uh, fast. And device are running very hard and uh, uh, more activity to that. So in this year, the focus in many uh, functionality in packaging integration. So consider a main factor. The packaging is very critical for successful co-design with packaging. So there are uh, many key factors. Consider optical performance, electric, electrical performance, thermal management, also cost reliability, many features. So all of that, yeah, uh, were uh, related to uh, this product is uh, going to the market. So it's very important. So as we know, the packaging uh, cost breakdown in microelectronics, many costs in devices, but the, uh, in packaging, the cost is just a small portion. But for photonics, yeah, just um, invert. The chip, uh, the chip size uh, in development phase, yeah, the cost will be high. But in mass production, the chip, the chip cost will be low. But uh, the package cost will be high. So one more example in photonics package in the module. So photonics uh, devices, including the laser, and the high speed uh, optical devices, uh, including the waveguide, the splitter, the modulator, the photodiode. Also, uh, fiber uh, interface to connect or reciprocal, yeah, is uh, um, uh, one of issue uh, convert from the menu to automation. So that's a very important to consider how to manufacture it. Autonomous. So in package chain, yeah, in the past, yeah, we can see the left feed, uh, a photo, uh, many, many operator by menu and uh, uh, many uh, design by customer design and uh, the volume uh, quite low. But at this moment, yeah, the trend is getting to the automation with uh, the high volume. So one example uh, for Intel, 
uh, they also, they also uh, successful to develop the silicon photonics chip in 400G uh, transceiver module. Also, uh, last Terra, uh, Cisco, also do that. So it is uh, uh, the trend how to uh, build the package technology from menu for low value to automatic Automation for high value is very important. So yeah, this is a, a one of a summary. Uh, uh, silicon chip is a share the cost a uh, low volt, low uh, portion, and many costs are in the fiber connector, laser assembly, and the final test in a mass production. So there are two uh, portion. Yeah. For the cost, one is a photonics chip, silicon photonics chip, and the external laser chip. The application just for unbox artists and the co-packaging artists. And the other side is a fiber spatial connector. There are two types of covering from fiber to a PIC chip. One is edge covering, another one is grading covering. Both of them throw away. Uh, focusing at that. So for how is cheaper to uh, multi-fiber, we have to consider the fiber pitch and the index matching to reduce the covering length and also consider micro lens to reduce the inter, uh, insertion loss. So uh, from this page, yeah, we can see the edge covering with uh, different uh, waveguide design. Uh, there are some advantage uh, also have uh, this advantage. For the grading cover, yeah, it can uh, perform a very low uh, covering loss and the uh, uh, wavelength uh, dependent. So the covering loss are less than uh, 1.0 dB. And fully comply with the CMOS process, it will be provide a very low cost uh, process uh, like a PSMC also can provide uh, this process. And also can provide the high density and uh, uh, flexibility in arrangement of optical interface. So optical interface, optical single mode fiber or multi mode fiber, we can uh, uh, covering input or output in everywhere. So uh, edge covering is very uh, suitable for wafer label uh, PIC uh, devices. Yeah, so in Broadway, we have uh, three approach in edge coupling. So the approach A, yeah, we have uh, input uh, fiber and uh, output uh, fiber array uh, with a micro lens, and we uh, insert the CWDN uh, chip. Uh, for example, like a, a CWDN uh, 4 channel AWG chip or a filter block. Yeah, we can uh, align and uh, uh, complete the optical performance yeah, in mass production. So the second one is a uh, uh, beam covering uh, image. That is a free space optics. The covering uh, through the AWG chip and uh, have a right angle uh, to uh, convert the optical beam into the uh, photodial chip yeah, in the LOSA. And uh, the third, uh, we can provide the uh, AWG chip uh, conjoined with uh, uh, the uh, fiber array and the reciprocal. Yeah. So most of them, we have to consider uh, the fiber pitch index matching and the micro lens to reduce the covering lens. Also, yeah, we have to discuss with the customer optical beam covering design and the operating temperature range. Both of them have to meet the reliability requirement. So again, yeah, it's uh, one example. Yeah, we also we we already development the automation the, the system yeah, to complete the alignment. Now here is an uh, uh, example in our uh, production. Yeah, we have uh, the machine. Yeah, we design the algorithm for alignment and uh, have a graphic uh, user interface and uh, to check the performance uh, platform pattern and epoxy uh, curing 
for multiple uh, access control. So most of uh, key factor had to consider the tolerance and for uh, mass production. So this page, yeah, we just demo uh, one of example. Yeah, it's uh, for the CWN4. So actually, uh, we successful uh, to complete the automation, the machine, and we uh, get the uh, production, the monthly, monthly throughput, and the delivery rate uh, tier 10,000 uh, pieces a month. So the automation and the alignment yeah, less than uh, one minute. So we have uh, many uh, production data, and we have uh, 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 the SPC chart. So the optical performance is less than uh, 2.0 dB. So actually, uh, in room temperature, uh, 1.5 dB. So it's a, a very good optical performance uh, in design and uh, in process control. Okay, uh, talking about another uh, covering for the PIC chip is grading uh, covering. So I uh, pick up uh, some uh, photo yeah, for the 1D uh, grading cover and the uh, 2D grading cover. So different kinds of uh, chip design for uh, optical fiber uh, grading uh, covering. So uh, it, it it will be uh, related to the chip designer. So most of most of uh, uh, user uh, discuss with us, yeah, how to uh, design the grading and uh, covering the optical beam uh, from the grading cover of the chip to optical fiber and the optical uh, fiber array. The array including the uh, one dimension and the two dimension fiber array. So this page, yeah, we demonstrate uh, Broadway also uh, complete the automation, the alignment machine. Yeah, this alignment machine uh, for grading covering machine. So automation uh, grading covering uh, for uh, GC covering, yeah, for multi-channel. So at this moment, yeah, our capability, we can alignment uh, 12 channel, 12 channel. So uh, the uh, photo A, yeah, it's a uh, alignment uh, station. And the uh, photo B, yeah, we can see is a transceiver uh, circuit board. And we have uh, one uh, uh, fiber array uh, just attached on the, on the chip. The photo C and the D, yeah, just uh, uh, we have an image system yeah, to uh, control the a stage by automation, yeah. And the photo D is uh, in our production line. Yeah, the uh, the algorithm can adjust the station and uh, complete the uh, channel balance for uh, insertion loads for optimize the optical insertion loads. So talking about the uh, PIC uh, package, that Broadway can provide the solution. Uh, either uh, edge covering or uh, grading covering uh, to customer. Now we are uh, waiting uh, to co-work with um, uh, a customer uh, to complete the final product package. So finally, uh, from our uh, viewpoint, the cost of driving the photonics chip uh, package technology. Yeah, from the Dr. Lin uh, mentioned, yeah, there are three orientation. Now one is technology orientation. Uh, second is application. The third is cost. So uh, from the engineer R&D to uh, mass production, now we've seen uh, technology and the application yeah, are very important. It's uh, the starting point. But if we would like to uh, get the huge demand, we have to consider uh, what cost where customer can accept. So cost is very important. So for Tony's chip uh, structure and the performance strongly uh, related to fiber uh, covering optical loads. So finally, yeah, from our viewpoint, the GC grading covering 
is uh, better uh, better than edge coverage in optical performance. So it, it will be provide uh, uh, one concept to uh, cheaper design. But a low profile fiber array cover, yeah, is very important for grading cover because uh, all of them have to package it inside the module. So low profile uh, fiber array cover is another design issue uh, for uh, reliability. So thank you very much. It's a, a presentation uh, from Broadway. Yeah, have any questions? Um, uh, many thanks. Uh, and indeed, we come. We go now to the questions. Uh, very, very. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I, I would want now that uh, all the the, the speakers which we, there were before to to switch on their camera. Um, um, first, I will go uh, to uh, Jeroen Duis, but uh, in. Uh, uh, one remark I want to, to, to make is, uh, especially in this packaging part, I see that there is uh, a, a kind of uh, general um, 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 conclusion already yeah, that cost factor of the package is very uh, important and bringing down the cost of uh, the package and that automation and uh, generic solutions are important uh, there. Um, and for Jeroen, uh, you also showed that, uh, that, there are, that there could be many interfaces, especially if you go to sensing. Um, what do you think, uh, as an advice, are the, are the best things to do uh, in, in the beginning to bring down the costs uh, in, the, in the package? I think you should be thinking really about like how to do the assembly process. So when you have chips which are fixed already in a design, there's nothing you can do already to select a process or to change a process. So if you know in the beginning, like, hey, in, if I'm going to assemble two chips together or a chip to a, uh, a fiber array and we're using alignment loops, uh, then you have a feedback mechanism, uh, which is on the chip itself is costing no additional space. It's just like intelligence that you're bringing in. But in the end, it's saving you a lot uh, to not do the probing on the chips itself uh, and to just do like a passive assembly uh, strategy uh, using the equipment that you have in place already. So it's rather easy then to do like the prototyping already on automatic tools. Okay. Uh, uh, Anna, I had more or less a quick question for you. Yeah, I, I have uh, some remarks as well. So uh, uh, both uh, FIX and Technobis are in the FIXA program because I think that we all believe in the standards. We think that they are really needed to really uh, scale up to 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 bring uh, to short the time to the market for the for the companies. So we believe that standards are really needed. This is why we're all working together to to bring the sta uh, standards and awareness to the people who start uh, even playing with the peaks on the level of the design to have this knowledge uh, in advance because it's much faster, much, much uh, more cheaper when you, in this, uh, even on the beginning of the process, you know how to design your chip. So um, I think that uh, indeed, in if you want to scale up, the standards are something that is very important and we all working together to bring the standards uh, to the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, um... Mr. Chen, um, uh, you were also talking about the same uh, subject, and you you used the words also generic solutions uh, to to work, to go uh, in direction of generic solutions. Um, are there some specific uh, generic solutions where, where you are uh, looking for? And, and also maybe uh, uh, related to working together, collaboration. Are there some areas in which you think that uh, we could work together to find the new generic solutions? I think, uh, uh, Mr. Chen, uh, I don't hear you. <laughs> Maybe one of the other uh, two. Uh, um, um, oh, uh, okay. Hi. Hello. Yeah. You you yeah. heard my question? Yeah, could could you repeat again? Yeah, I will repeat it again. You were talking about uh, also about generic solutions to bring down the costs uh, in uh, the package. Yeah. And the question was. Is there some specific area, if you look to the package, where you are looking for new generic solutions? 
uh, which you have not yet the, uh, uh, the, 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 yeah, um, maybe let's, let's say it like this, where maybe you could, could, you hope to find better solutions than there are now. And, uh, uh, and, and the second question is, uh, where do you see that the collaboration with uh, the, the Dutch uh, um, uh, institutes and companies on this area could work? Okay, so uh, the, for the uh, question one, yeah, we are consider uh, the application area for the uh, transceiver module. So as we know, the transceiver module, yeah, the apply in the data center application. So the cost is very uh, sensitive. So we uh, discuss with uh, a customer like uh, a tier one at this moment, like uh, there are uh, two or three uh, tier one customer. They already provide the silicon autonomous chip uh, transceiver uh, in the market. So uh, we have a target uh, cost. So that's why we development the automation uh, process and uh, the machine to meet the cost. And also we have to get the benefit. So it is very important. So if the demand not so huge, it is, uh, it is not the driving force for us to develop an automation uh, process and the automation uh, process. So the demand, uh, total quantity is very important. So uh, as I uh, show us, uh, show, uh, show everyone, yeah, our monthly uh, delivery record, we can uh, ship uh, 10,000 pieces or uh, 50,000 pieces a month. So it's very important. Uh, so, so it's uh, the first one. And uh, for the next question, for next question, yeah, uh, we uh, consider for next step, Operate way for uh, packaging. So we also looking for the new uh, application area and uh, uh, try to co-work with uh, uh, every company uh, that have any uh, uh, opportunity that we can co-work together. Yeah, so it looks that we all have to work together for this design rules for the standards to really yeah, bring the product faster to the market. Uh, yes, we think so. Like we lost uh, Eddie, uh, I noticed that there was a question actually coming in. So the strength of the industry today seems to be its flexibility to deliver specific and tailor-made solutions. But there was also a mentioning about the search of killer applications uh, and the herd of big players, uh, which are about the cottage industry of nature, of photonics. Does any participant dare to call a killer application? Anna, do you want to take that? What I can say, I'm from technology, so for me, the killer application will be sensing definitely. But what we see, what's coming to uh, uh, to the technology for the packaging request, yeah, it's uh, it's everything. It's it's uh, still very fragmented. So we have, uh, of course, sensing. We have a lidar, uh, but we have also the uh, datacom uh, application. So I don't see like a specific trend uh, now. Yeah, of course, it's more lidar, if I would say, than another sensing. But maybe uh, for, for Arne have uh, another option. He is the expert from from the biosensing. How is it with your guys? As as mentioned before, the biosensing is is one of the killer applications from our point of view, of course, um, because that's that's where the high numbers are. But that doesn't always mean it's also the biggest market. Eh? It's always the the price per module and the and the amount of modules which are important. So there are a lot of nice killer applications in sensing where the volume might be not as high in consumer products, but the margin per or the, the price per module is, uh, is significantly higher. 
Uh, yeah, I, I, I have one uh, uh, remark from Rolf, who is sitting uh, with him uh, with me here in the room. He is thinking that maybe this question is more about the concept of the killer application. If the industry even care about the having a killer application or, or not. So maybe it's more about the concept. Yeah, and for years we we heard that uh, data com and telecom will be the killer application, and l later the rest will follow up. But I don't know, guys, what you are thinking about this. Well, I think it's it's completely true and valid. So I think that datacom is already a very huge market, uh, and it's existing. Uh, but of course, there it's also the fight for like on shorter distances where photonics is being attractive. So the competition is maybe not even in the photonics field, but the competition is in the electronics field and how people were capable of making shorter distances lower in cost. Uh, I think when we are really going to photonic processors where you have very high dense interfaces, dense interconnects, uh, like companies like Intel are working on it uh, and have remote lasers, then you're getting a very big boom again into the datacom industry, which is really fueling the amount of uh, identical components that are required. So I think if you're looking today, uh, server parks of Microsoft are consuming about 200,000 optical links, uh, and that will be like easily a tenfold of that if photonics is being cost effective at the distances which are half of the length as they are today. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another question from uh, Kai. Uh, dear speakers, Taiwan is known from electronics packaging with a big name such as the ASA group. group. Do you see any potential collaboration with the Taiwanese companies? Of course that we see. <laughs> Johan? Sorry, it was not... Uh for the uh, question. Of course that we see a big potential for the collaboration. So um, as uh, as we say, and I think that uh, all uh, companies in Europe agree, we are uh, interested in a certain level of the production per, uh, capacity per, per production. So as I say, in, in the name of the Technobis, yeah, we have a capacity to produce uh, 250,000 items uh, per year, and everything that is uh, above this amount, we will be happy to to to, to give away uh, together with some technology transfer to 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 the partners in Taiwan. So, of course, this is a big uh, opportunity for collaboration. Mm -hmm. We are more focused for the prototyping. We have a lot of experience uh, with packaging our own items and uh, uh, doing this for our clients. But everything what is a bigger volume, we are we are not uh, uh, compatible. We are not uh, competitor with you guys, of course. Thank you all very much for answering these questions. As you can see, uh, the moderator Eddie uh, had some internet connection issues, um, but we need to wrap up anyway because uh, it's already ten pa uh, past five. Is there anyone who li would like to add something to this? Perhaps uh, Dr. Lin or Chen, is there anything you would like uh, to add to the conversation? Yeah, I, I would like to thank all the, the speakers uh, today. And uh, I think uh, it's uh, probably uh, one of the first steps that uh, we can uh, understand uh, each other's uh, capabilities. And uh, probably in the long run, uh, uh, we, we should be able to find some uh, killer applications uh, in a way that uh, we, we do uh, our uh, homework, we do uh, our development right. And uh, probably the most important thing uh, of all is uh, uh, we many people always compare uh, the photonics to the, the current semiconductor or silicon uh, industry's uh, success. But uh, uh, we have to remember that the silicon didn't give out uh, the light. So uh, it's all for us to to uh, take up, uh, you know, take the, the market about uh, anything about the photonics, I think. So uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for uh, your comments. Eddie, would you like to take over or would you like to wrap up? Um, I, I hope that uh, you can hear me again or not. Yes. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. I, I don't know what happened. So uh, uh, my connection was completely lost. So I'm uh, very sorry for that. 
Um, yeah, I would uh, like to wrap up uh, to tell that I see that um, um, it's, it's very important, but as I said many times, eh, is to, to work together because it's a complex and very long uh, supply chain and not everybody can do uh, everything themselves. Um, and I heard a few times that uh, understanding each other, eh, um, uh, get to know each other, it's, it's very important then. Um, yeah, we would, uh, uh, from the Netherlands, uh, we would uh, still like to visit uh, Taiwan and uh, to see, to really see wh uh, what is going on and how we can work together. So we still hope that we can do that in autumn. Um, after the summer session, there will be probably uh, a fourth session, um, uh, which will be uh, on um, uh, research collabor collaboration, because maybe there will, there will be a opportunity for uh, funding for research uh, groups. Uh, we are still working on that. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's hope we see each other back uh, uh, after the summer in this session, and otherwise uh, let's see each other in uh, in Taiwan, hopefully. Thank, thank you very much. Thank for you, us, Eddie. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Bye.